Intracranial hemorrhages or bleeding within the skull encompasses four main types. Number one, epidural or extradural hematomas. Number two, subdural hematomas. Number three, subarachnoid hemorrhages. And number four, intracerebral or intraparenchymal hemorrhages. For each of these four types, we'll look at their common causes, the pathophysiology, and how they commonly present all their signs and symptoms. Starting with epidural hematomas, the textbook cause is blunt trauma to the side of the head around the pterion region or the temporal region of the skull. This results in a fracture of the skull in about 85% of the time, which then ruptures the underlying middle meningeal artery. Blood then spills off between the skull and the dura mater, separating the two and increasing blood in that potential space. The common presentation is a history of head trauma, followed by a loss of consciousness, then a loose period interval, followed by neurological deterioration, accompanied with nausea, vomiting, lethargy and seizures, which usually is the result of increased intracranial pressure. Moving on to subdural hematomas, the primary cause of this type of bleed is also trauma, but usually from falls, unlike blunt trauma in the epidural hematomas. The cause of the bleed here is because the skull and the brain move apart from each other from the fall, which tears the bridging vein, which are venous blood vessels and leads to blood spilling below the dura or between the dura and brain tissue. Most patients will present with a reduced consciousness and pupil abnormalities and because we are getting the mass effect from the bleed within the skull, increased intracranial pressure will occur. Moving on to subarachnoid hemorrhage, this is where we have bleeding into the subarachnoid space between, so this is between the pia and the arachnoid layer. This particular bleed type accounts for 5% of all strokes, which can be both traumatic and non-traumatic in origin. The most common cause, about 85% of all subarachnoid hemorrhages, is due to a rupture of aneurysm. The way that they present is most commonly with a thunderclap headache, so this is the worst headache you've ever experienced, followed by neck stiffness and acute confusion. Finally, we finish on intracerebral hemorrhage. This is bleeding directly into brain tissue. This type of bleed accounts for approximately 10 to 15% of all strokes, specifically the hemorrhagic type. The most common cause is secondary to long-standing hypertension. The classic presentation of the intracerebral hemorrhage is a gradual onset of stroke-like symptoms, but as the hematoma starts to expand, so does the increased intracranial pressure. So we'll see an altered level of consciousness, headaches, vomiting, and pupil changes.